Brendan Henry here, the world's leading expert in peptide science, with the most scientifically supported Pinealon article online. And there is a peptide so powerful it can boost your body's own mesenchymal stem cells to speed up healing and rejuvenation without the heavy cost of stem cell clinics. It has been right under the nose of experts for 15 years, yet Professor Covinson is the only one who's talked about it. Vesugin, the blood vessel bioregulator, which is present in Ventfort at a concentration of 0.2 mg per gram, has been shown to enhance the proliferation of human mesenchymal stem cells that were cultured by two times within five days. Brian Johnson, one of the most known longevity guys in this scene, went out and got young Swedish mesenchymal stem cells injected into him. He chose these due to the good data supporting them and the fact that it's shown that younger stem cells have more healing capacity than older stem cells. What's so cool about Vesugin is that it also inhibited your own stem cell senescence in another study with cultured human mesenchymal stem cells, it was shown that they lost their proliferation and differentiation potential through becoming senescent, which corresponded to increased expression of P16, which is a marker of apoptosis, and P21, but Vesugin was able to reduce these markers and delay the senescence, which is really cool, because not only is Vesugin proliferating stem cells, but it's slowing the rate of aging. Considering we have other studies showing markers of biological age being reduced with Vesugin in humans, quite significantly too, we are onto something big here. So these mesenchymal stem cells are from our own bone marrow, not to be confused with hematopoietic stem cells, which can only turn into blood cell lineage. Mesenchymal ones can become any type of cell. They migrate to an injury or any site that is initiating signaling for repair. So the stem cells are in circulation, they come across the signaling, and it directs them into the tissue. And about 97% of our DNA is controlled by epigenetic processes, things such as stressors, injuries, environment, and also, of course, the binding of other molecules such as peptides to our DNA. This initiates RNA polymerase and gene transcription. Because of this, Covinson's bioregulator peptides have become so fascinating because they are mostly tissue specific, although there are some nuances to this where some of the peptides have crossover and affect other systems as well. If we wanted to increase our stem cells and then direct them to a certain type of tissue, we could in theory at least do this by combining Vesugin with another specific peptide that controls the transcription factors that we want. I can investigate tailored strategies like this with my coaching at unyieldingvigor.com. And by the way, you never have to worry about running out of stem cells either. This proliferation is just division. Stem cells can undergo division indefinitely as they have a high telomerase activity. What happens is the pull simply gets reduced with age, which is a result of our red bone marrow declining with age. Because at birth, it's all red, but by early adulthood, it becomes about 60% red and 40% yellow. And as we age to 30, that ratio becomes about 50-50. And at age 70, our red marrow is only 30%, shifting its predominance to yellow. And there is a guy named Christian Drupu, who wrote a book called Cracking the Stem Cell Code. He had a product called Stem Regen, which is supposed to increase the release of circulating stem cells. It's based on various types of algae, and when I researched these algae, I found that their amino acid sequences are rich in aspartic acid and arginine, and some of the larger peptides are composed of lysine, glutamic acid, and aspartic acid. These are the specific amino acids in Vesugin in that order. So I was thinking, I wonder if these algae also contain the peptide Vesugin and if it's the main peptide in them responsible for the effect on stem cells. Aclonia cava is another type of algae that is reputed to be very beneficial for blood flow. One study even suggests that it may be more effective than Viagra. On the other hand, Vesugin remarkably restored erectile function in patients with erectile dysfunction and atherosclerosis. There could certainly be a lot of different mechanisms at play here, but it would be interesting to know if Vesugin is in these algaes. And there's only one way to find out. We need to conduct an HPLC analysis on these algae to check for the presence of Vesugin. Here is Professor Covinson telling us about Vesugin's ability to stimulate stem cells. This is a peptide known as Vesugin. It's patented for what purpose? For stimulating stem cells. In other words, Vesugin has been identified as the most potent stimulator of stem cells worldwide. Vesugin isn't just any peptide, it's a super drug. Why is it so important? Well, we have approximately 30% of stem cells in all our organs and tissues. That's why some people have lived for 100 years. They utilize all the resources that have been built up over time. So in every organ, the brain, the liver, the multipotent stem cells everywhere, they are kind of dormant, but somehow they regenerate. But from where? These are our reserve cells. And the question is, where do they regenerate from? That's the challenge. 
how do we activate these reserve stem cells that we all have with Vesugen? It's the latest discovery. It not only stimulates vascular cells, but also stimulates stem cells in the body. So the value of Vesugen surpasses anything currently available. We're even considering it as a drug, as a stem cell stimulant. Understandable, right? Clearly 100 micrograms is not enough. A drug with a concentration of 500 micrograms as a medicine is already injectable, and even more so to go straight into the bloodstream. Yes, Vesugen is a valuable drug for activating stem cells in humans, not through transplantation, which is what various questionable clinics offer, whether it's creams, stem cell treatments, or shaving mirrors. You understand, it's all absolute nonsense. Simply activating your own stem cells is the right approach. All right, Brennan back. I hope you enjoyed that part about shaving mares. And so, while Vesugen could be awesome for stem cells, it also has some other uses, such as for cardiovascular disease, which is the leading cause of death globally. Now, remember when I said it improved erectile function in men who had atherosclerosis? Well, it also helped for what is described as a senescence-associated secretory phenotype of the blood vessels. In simpler terms, it's when cells secrete signaling molecules, such as pro-inflammatory mediators and extracellular matrix-degrading enzymes. It even kills stem cells. All of this causes DNA damage, accelerated aging, and greatly harms the blood vessel walls, contributing to less elasticity, a narrowing of the blood vessel wall resulting in less blood flow, and further contributes to tissue damage and inflammation, exacerbating the negative effects of chronic oxidative stress. So Fasugen seems to work partly through increasing KI67 through binding to the promoter region of the MKI67 gene, which codes for it. And this enhances the proliferative potential of the endothelial cells. And it also normalizes endothelin 1 and decreases connexin 37, which leads to like a vasodilation effect. And it provided long-term remission to hypertensive crisis episodes in the elderly when combined with hypotensive therapy. And it also reduces LDL cholesterol. Now there has also been imaging studies done on the dura mater of a rat's brain with the full blood vessel extract for injection which would be comparable to vent fort oral formulation, which showed that an 18-month-old rat's blood vessels went from narrow and hard arteries to wide and elastic. In fact, Covington noted it restored them back to the same level as a young and healthy rat, totally combating the age-related changes in blood vessels. And here you could see the same rat that was treated with vent fort, the blood vessels are now elastic and dilated, to the same level as a young six-month-old rat. In Vesugen, helped in Alzheimer's disease, but not as much as Pinealon, which was able to completely regrow the mushroom spines and culture. And just a side note, I am a huge fan of genetic testing and family history. It allows us to see what we are predisposed to. For example, each of us has two copies of an APOE gene. There is type 2, which is protective for Alzheimer's disease, type 3, which is neutral, which is what I have, and type 4, which is high risk. So when we know these things, we can create a more optimized plan long term which is just one of the things we can do with our coaching. If you're interested, you can go to unyieldingvigor.com. Now, Vesugen alone, and also Pinealon alone, improved organic brain syndrome in humans. This is a condition which manifests as memory loss, confusion, impaired thinking, emotional disturbances, personality changes, and so on. It could also occur from trauma, infection, disease, or some degenerative condition. All of the above suggest that Vesugen does have a neuroprotective and regenerative effect all of which could be mediated through stem cells and improved blood flow, which is so important as a lot of dementia and Alzheimer's have blood flow impaired. And when you can't get enough oxygen and nutrients to your brain, it doesn't function as well. And Vesugen was also noted to improve the biological age indices here better than Pinealon, which is what we see across all of the studies. There was even one that showed a several year age reduction in the elderly, but the results were always best when combined with Pinealon. Vesugen also improved the psycho-emotional state of workers under stressful conditions, such as truck drivers. And did you know the number of polyploid cells in the human aorta after 40 years old reaches 30% of the total number of endothelial cells? This is bad because polyploid cells have an extra set of chromosomes, and they form from an overburden of oxidative stress. How do I know this? Because increasing the NAD plus regenerating enzyme and enhancing SIRT1 activity, which are very potent antioxidant pathways in the body, can reduce occurrence of polyploidy. And one of the best ways to increase NAD plus cofactors is through exercise. However, let's say we take it to the extremes and we decide to run a marathon. This is an extreme stressor. 
your muscles begin releasing irisin, a myokin that stimulates glucose uptake to your muscles and improves mitochondrial complex 1 of the electron transport chain, and PPARA increases to aid in the utilization of fatty acids as well. These pathways activate the SIRT1 axis, which is what NADPLUS works through. However, these antioxidant defense systems can't keep up because you just keep running. So some damage starts to accumulate and advanced glycation end products are formed. This stress was transient since the AGEs came back down after 72 hours. But this still causes an accumulation of cellular damage, which can drive the formation of polyploid cells. This is particularly concerning because if polyploid cells extend to tetraploid, which is having four sets of chromosomes, they adopt a dysfunctional phenotype. This phenotype leads to cell death, increased inflammation, and heightened expression of genes related to extracellular matrix remodeling. It's essentially the senescence-associated secretory phenotype I spoke about earlier, which Visugin can help correct. Now remember, this is just on the extremes. It's been shown that endurance athletes who compete in these events still live longer than the average population. But I mention it because these peptides like Visugin can become an important part of repair and recovery for high-level athletes. And Vesugin and Ventford also work for senile purpura. In 23 patients aged 70 to 82 who had this condition, which is basically photo damage of your skin, it causes a discoloration, almost like a bruise. And Vesugin was able to improve all of these symptoms, like spontaneous hemorrhages on the face, neck, forearms, and hands, even after previous treatments failed. So let's talk about Vesugin and physical performance. When combined with Pinealon, it improved endurance in mice in a forced swim test, it's noted to enhance recovery and help maintain high levels of quick reflexes and accuracy. Its mechanism of action is not as well known as pinealon, but it could be hypothesized that the stem cells and better blood flow to the muscles and brain would help. And lastly, for addressing vascular conditions, which is more beneficial, Vesugin or Ventfort? Well, Ventfort is shown to lower cholesterol levels more, specifically LDL more. But for ED, Vesugin is the only one proven to work. Same for stem cells, and psycho-emotional state, organic brain syndrome, Alzheimer's, biological age reversal, and sports performance. Now I'm not saying that Ventfort won't help these things, but that has not been studied, so I recommend Vesugin. And Vesugin also improves some aspects of the immune system, whereas Ventfort, we don't know. So Vesugin also stimulated stem cell expression of CD14 and CD19. These correspond to monocytes and macrophages, and B cells, a type of lymphocyte. All of these are involved in the immune response against pathogens. So Vesugin was also shown to improve the CD4 plus CD8 thymocytes and inhibit apoptosis of thymocytes. This was seen in culture. However, when we look at the blood work analysis in patients who were taking Vesugin for three months or longer compared to control, we can see that it can increase the lymphocytes and leukocytes but we didn't see that increase in macrophages. However, there is one side effect you should be aware of. Markers of CD34 plus positive hematopoietic cells did decrease in the blood, and these are important for producing your actual blood cells. So when we look at a chart from another study where patients took this peptide for three months and six months, we can see a slight decline in hemoglobin, suggesting a slight decline in red blood cells. This means that if we're going to take Vesugin, we should stack it with another peptide specifically the bone marrow peptides. If you want to know why, you'll just have to check out that module. And this has been Brennan Henry, the world's leading expert in peptide science, bringing you another episode. And I hope you enjoyed this one. I am releasing my peptide mastery course tomorrow, and in it I will be covering over 60 peptides and how you can use them to improve your health. I wanted people to benefit from peptides as much as possible, so I made it for the knowledge seeker, which is the person who wants to learn as much as they possibly can and have a strong understanding of how these peptides work and how they can benefit you. And I wanted to make it for the results maximizer, as this person just wants to know what to do and how to do it. So it's for both of these people, and you can check it out at peptides.unyieldingvigor.com.